What up out there, welcome to Primer Lawns video. Today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to scarify your lawn from start to finish. This is going to be a beginner's guide. Let's go. This is the lawn that we will be scarifying today. Before we begin, it's important to explain why you need to scarify your lawn. This is the core that I've just dug out of the lawn. Whenever you look at it, you can see three distinct layers. At the bottom, you have the soil. At the top, you have the lawn, which is the moss and the grass. And then in the middle, we have a thatch layer. The thatch layer is easy to see as it is lighter in color. And whenever you squeeze it, it shrinks down. A thin layer of thatch improves the performance of your lawn. However, too much thatch is bad for your lawn. And over time, it will start to build up and it will stop air water and nutrients from getting into the soil. The first job whenever you're scarifying your lawn is actually to cut your grass. Now a general rule of thumb would be if you're going to be using a tool such as this to scarify your lawn manually I would say that you'd want to sculpt your grass right down because it's going to make it a lot easier to use this tool. If for example you're going to be using an electric scarifier or a petrol scarifier then maybe just cut your grass slightly shorter than what you would normally cut it and it's going to recover a lot faster. Okay, now before we get further into this video, folks, I should have smashed the, the like button now. Let's get on with it. So we'll have the grass cut. Now let's have a look at some of the tools you need to scarify your lawn. To scarify your lawn, you can use a powered machine such as this. Now that's a professional scarifier. You can also use a, a domestic scarifier, electric one. Now you don't need any tools to scarify your lawn. I have a selection of rakes here so we have just a a very old-fashioned metal bulldog rake. This is okay for scarifying small spaces. I also have a scarfan rake. So we're going to test this out and see how good a job it does. So what I found was whenever I was using the metal tine rake, it all collected along along the spring tines and that really slowed down and it wasn't as effective. Okay, so we had a go with the rake. Now we're going to have a go with the scarf fan rake. Now, as I say, this thing is actually designed to, to scarf I lawn, so we'll have a go with what this is like. First impressions, a lot better. short matter of time you can see how much stuff is coming out there and it's not getting it's not getting jammed up a small garden these tools could be practical for anything over 50 to 50 square meters you definitely want to either be using a machine you can hire something like we use or you can get a cheap electric one for 100 to 200 pounds depending on the size of your lawn your budget another important tip is how high or how low should you go? The best tip I can give you for scarfing your lawn is to do a section, put the scarfire on a high height and go over it once and then stop and have a look and see if you're taking enough out. If you go too deep, you'll cause a lot of damage to your lawn or it can take lo longer for your lawn to recover. So it always err on the side of caution, start high and come down. If you continually go over your lawn, you will actually, you can actually remove it with a scarifier. So that's just a tip. Start high, come down in stages. So I've done a small section and I'm going to have a look to see if I've taken um, enough out or not. Now, I'm going to use this tool here. It's a landscaping rake. I'll leave a, an affiliate link down in the video description where you can pick one of these up. 
If you buy one off my link, then you're helping supporting my channel and making videos like it's possible. But I'll show you why these rakes are so good. They have a, they have a lip on them here. And whenever you're raking, whenever you're using it, you keep your back straight and they gather up a lot of waste. And we use these professionally anytime we're scarfing. We have the lawn scarfied. Now, should you scarfy once or twice or three times, generally, most of the time we'll scarfy twice. The closer you bring the lines, the closer you bring the lines, the less severe you're going to be. If you go perpendicular, if you go, if you go straight across and then you go like that, you're going to take out the most and it's going to be the hardest on the grass to recover. So for this lawn, I'm just going to. We're going to just take a slight diagonal across. So we've gone straight down. We've gone straight down. My next line is going to be just that. If a rake looks too much hard work to clear up waste, you can't go wrong to having a small blower. And low obvious, always blow in the direction of the wind. Okay, well, I have most of the stuff lifted now. There's another very important task that is often overlooked whenever you're scarfing your lawn. Now, if we're doing it commercially, we're in with the big blowers and we don't need to do this. But with your own lawn, you'll find that there's areas that you maybe haven't got every last bit of moss and thatch lifted. And the problem is, if you leave this land on the lawn, it's going to break down and it's going to find its way back down into the thatch land, create a lot of problems. And you've just spent a lot of time trying to pull this out. So we're going to get the mower out and give this a quick cut. If you've enjoyed this video, watch Get your lawn ready for spring next.